Hey everyone, this is Nick with Duality Repair, and here we have three definitive technology speaker amplifiers. On either side, we have tower amplifiers, model BP8080ST, and in the center, we have a center speaker amplifier, model CS8080HD. These were all sent in by the same person. Supposedly, none of them are working properly, and they all failed right after the warranty expired. So we're going to go through these one at a time. For no reason at all, let's start with the center speaker amplifier. All three of these amps are Class D amplifiers, which is why they're so small. And this one has just two main components. It's got the power supply component on the right, which looks to be a very standard off-the-shelf power supply. And that's feeding into this digital board here on the left, which is handling all of the audio processing. Let's start by trying to verify the functionality of the power supply. So it's feeding the digital board via this four-pin connector here. So let's flip it over and take some measurements. The schematics that I have do not appear to apply to the center amplifier. I believe they're for the tower amplifiers. So the first thing I want to do before checking for voltages is to try and identify the ground pin of our four pin connection here from the power supply. So I'm going to use the negative lead of this capacitor here. Check for continuity at each pin. Four, three, two. Pin two is going to be our ground pin, so we're not going to look for voltage there. All three other pins, however, should probably have some sort of voltage on them. I've applied power, and I can actually already hear a high-pitched whine coming from the power supply. So I know something is going on in there. Let's take some voltage measurements. So we'll start with pin 1. And we have positive 5 volts. That seems reasonable. Pin 2 we know is ground. We don't need to measure that. Pin 3, negative 5 volts. Also seems very reasonable. Pin 4, I get nothing. Now, I'm not positive, but that doesn't seem right. There are four wires coming from the power supply. We know that only pin 2 is ground. I should be getting something on pin 4. Let's investigate further. Let's take a closer look at the power supply. Here's our four pin connector right here. And thankfully, they've added some labels on this side of the board to help us out. Pin 1 is labeled as positive 7 volts. We were measuring around positive 5. So if this label is accurate, we do have a slight problem with this pin. Pin 2 we already knew was ground, but it's nice to see that it's labeled as ground. Pin 3 is labeled as negative 7 volts. We were measuring around negative 5, so again, there may or may not be a problem on this pin. Pin 4 is labeled as PS or power supply on. So this is actually just a communication pin between the power supply and the digital board. And so I don't think we should expect any voltage on that pin. So there may or may not be a, a slight problem with this part of the circuit. However, that's not my main concern. If we move over to this connector, I actually missed this on the initial inspection of the digital board. It's kind of hiding behind this four pin connector here. And this is gonna be our higher voltage. This is what's gonna actually drive the speaker. So very important. You can see one pin is labeled as positive VDC. The other is ground. However, when I have the power supply connected to AC power, I get absolutely nothing here. So I think this is where our main problem is stemming from. Since I don't have any schematics, let's take a look at this very simple block diagram that I made for the switching power supply. We have our main 120 volts AC being rectified and filtered to produce plus 340 volts DC. This is feeding our first transformer, T1. T1 is going to have four taps coming off of the secondary. Tap number one is going to produce positive 17 volts. This is going to feed this pulse width modulation IC, which ultimately drives the primary of this transformer. So this is a self-sustaining circuit. Tap 2 is going to produce negative 5 volts DC. Tap 3 is going to produce positive 5 volts DC. We know all of this is at least partially working. The area of concern is right here, this fourth tap. So if we follow this chain all the way to the end, we should see some unknown but high DC voltage here, which will drive the speakers, but we don't. And if we follow this all the way back, I actually get no DC voltage even at the output of this rectification and filter section. So this is where we want to place our focus. Let's take a look at all four rails of that transformer T1. There's our positive 17 volts. There's our positive low voltage rail measuring positive 5.15. Here's our negative low voltage rail. It's measuring negative 6.44. So perhaps these both should be plus and minus 7 volts, but let's move on for now. Here's our other rail, and again, we should be measuring some non-zero DC voltage, and we're only getting 47 millivolts. That's no good. So let's see what can actually cause this. 
There are only two components involved in the rectification and filtering of our unknown DC voltage rail. We have this single diode right here and this single electrolytic capacitor right here. If I had to put money on it, it would be a problem with this electrolytic, but there's only one way to find out, so let's pull it out and take some measurements. Here it is. This should be 100 microfarad at 25 volts. You can see we're only measuring 0.2 nanofarads, so there's no capacitance left in this at all. Let's measure a brand new one for reference. Here's a brand new one, the exact same ratings, 100 microfarad at 25 volts. You can see we're measuring 101 microfarads. So let's try replacing the old one with this and see what happens. After replacing that capacitor, we now have a voltage on our mystery rail, a little bit over 21 volts. We also have something on our high voltage rail now, a little bit over 48 volts. So it certainly seems like this power supply is functioning properly after just that one component replacement. Let's flip it over and take a look at what other components we might want to replace before reinstalling. Here's our mystery rail capacitor that I've already replaced. I've also replaced some of the other similar smaller value electrolytic capacitors around the power supply. I am going to replace the rest of the electrolytics, so these four on the AC side and these two on the output side, regardless of how these test. Replacing them now will improve the longevity of this power supply. Attached to this heatsink are two MOSFETs. They seem to be running just fine, so I'm just going to pull them clean and reapply new thermal compound. I'll do the same thing for the diode attached to this heatsink. If we take a look at this IC, this is one of our pulse width modulation ICs. You can see just how dark it is on the board surrounding that IC, indicating how hot this thing gets when it's running. It's running okay for now, but who knows for how long, so I'm going to replace it. All right, all done with the power supply. I think it turned out well. Let's plug it in and make sure it works. Not quite. As soon as I tried to play any audio, the amplifier started to behave erratically and I got absolutely nothing from the output. So I shut it off and started to investigate the high voltage rail. I found that this diode right here, which is a Schottky diode, it was shorted. It's reading about two to three ohms lead to lead. It was located right here, and this is the rectifier in our mystery rail, which is directly in line with the high voltage rail. Just to be safe, even though they're measuring fine, I also replaced these two Schottky diodes, which were here and here. These are the rectifiers for our low voltage rails, plus and minus 5 volts. So let's test it now. Everything appears to be functioning properly now. Before we get to the final test, for reference, let's check the voltages one more time. Pin 1 is positive 5.1 volts. Pin 2 we know is ground, pin 3 is negative 5.3 volts, pin 4, which again is the power supply on pin, this is only enabled when we have an audio signal at the input of the amplifier, and this is positive 3.1 volts. Our high voltage rail, this also is only enabled when we have an audio signal at the input to the amplifier, and this is positive 48 volts. Since this is a subwoofer amplifier, we have to use a very low frequency at the input. I have a 100 hertz at 1 volt sine wave at the input to the amplifier. I'll turn up the volume and we'll take a look at the output on the oscilloscope. Looks beautiful. If you've watched my channel, you'll know that I typically prefer using an oscilloscope to demonstrate the ability of audio equipment over using a speaker or set of speakers. You just can't get the sound quality over a video, but everyone can see the quality of an audio signal on an oscilloscope. This looks fantastic. That's going to do it for the repair of this Definitive Technology Center speaker amplifier, model CS8080HD, the repair attempt of the two tower speaker amplifiers, model BP8080ST, will have to wait for another video. If you're curious about what parts I use during this repair, I will flash a list of those at the end. Thanks for watching.